This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Tim Apicella, your host for our new show, What's on Your Mind Hawaii. Today's show, we hit the streets and we hit the beach park to discuss the topic of Honolulu's World War I Memorial Nanatorium and the end of 2017 and the start of 2018. For this new show, we invite you to contact Think Tech Hawaii and let us know if there's something that's important on your mind. I'd love to hear from you. So let's enjoy the, let's enjoy the new year and let's enjoy Hawaii, this tropical paradise. Aloha. Here with Mark, and Mark, you're from Vancouver, Canada. From Vancouver, and just visiting in uh, the Honolulu Waikiki area for uh, for about a month. My wife and I. Great. Well, welcome and uh, aloha. And we were talking about what to do with the World War One Memorial, and you uh, shared some thoughts before we came here on this interview spot. And so I'd like you to share a couple of those thoughts with me. Mahalo, Tim. Um, well, I guess it's kind of interesting that my wife and I were just talking about the the memorial as we were walking up here. And we're wondering just, you know, kind of how long it's been since it was in operation, because it looked like it was some sort of a, a public pool, maybe. Uh, you can obviously see the seats, you know, from, from afar. Um, but when, you know, you told me that it's been a sort of a bit of a bone of contention for uh, four decades now, um, I'd like to see something like this that obviously is a memorial to, in this case, I think it's the Great War, you were saying, World War I. I think the meshing of just current day people and activities and bringing people into a space, especially uh, a space that has memorial, is, is what I personally would like to see. Because I think there's no better recognition of sort of the ultimate sacrifice and all the sacrifices that everyone made in every war um, than just having people living their lives enjoying what you know what basically they've been given which is a great location and uh, yeah and i hope uh you know i hope uh, honolulu and the county are able to do something with it yeah it has been very frustrating because you just you just hit it right perfectly is that this has been a war memorial and for 40 years it's remained closed and it's just over time slowly and slowly deter deteriorated and i think that that upsets not only the veterans of this state but also veterans everywhere that come to visit and certainly those that have lived in hawaii for many many years it's it's got to be kind of a, a point of shame that this thing has just deteriorated over time um now there's there's thoughts that um not only would this be converted to a pool but or restored back to a pool but also uh, the idea of this being a volleyball court. Uh, I believe Tom Selleck suggested that about 40 years ago when he was playing volleyball before he became a, an actor. Uh, or so just restore it back to a beach. So you think a pool is what you thought? Well, I think anything that involves human activity and will draw people to the area. Now, there's no shortage of, of people in this area just because of the beautiful beaches and the stuff that nature's already given. But I think um, the fact that all ages could uh, could make use of um, the pool and or a volleyball court, just something that's active, that's celebrating life at the same time, paying respects to, um, you know, the, the sacrifices that were given in, in, in this case, the First World War. Well, I think a lot of people here would agree with you, and I want to thank you very much for sharing your thoughts, and um, aloha, and have a good stay. Mahalo, and uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Tim, and uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. This is Tim Apicella. What's on your mind, Hawaii? Jim, and we're here in front of the Nanatorium World War I Memorial. Jim, you've been here for a long time here. Uh, you said 1975. From New York. You're from New York. What do you think they should do with the Nanatorium here? Well, it just took too long. They just let it fall apart. So I think the last thing would make it a pool. I wanted a beach volleyball, like Tom Selleck said 40 years ago, but everybody laughed at him because they didn't think the beach volleyball would be an Olympic sport. Here it is 40 years later. It's an Olympic sport. I don't know. They, I don't know if they should rip it down or do something, but just get the beach back to the people. You know? Now, the mayor just before Christmas came out and said, yeah, do you have you know, definite plans? They want to get this thing moving. And it, it's been 40 years, and this thing hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, one of the proposals is to restore it back to its natural state, which is a swimming pool. Um, there was serious discussion about turning it into a volleyball court. What would you prefer? Well, I think the EPA stopped it from a swimming pool because any water coming from a pool back to the ocean has to be chlorinated. And that's not the way this thing is. The water surges in, it surges out. So I don't know, to make it a pool would be very expensive. Now, when they closed this in 1978, 
I believe they cited the reason for it was that there was a bacteria issue, that the water wasn't circulating enough and the bacteria counts were growing, and that was the, the primary reason for shutting it down. Do you remember why they shut it down back in 78? I think they're saying that that was a reason, but I think the uh, Environmental Protection Agency said that any water coming from a pool going back into the ocean has to be purified, has to be chlorinated. You can't dump water. Well, I don't think the fish would appreciate any chlorine going well, through their gills. So that's what stopped it, because an actual pool has to can't dump pool water back into the ocean unless you purify it. So you think Tom Selleck might have the idea? Yeah, but I don't know. I don't. I don't want. I swim there every day, seven days a week, and I just want my swimming to be So, if you had any uh, any recommendations for the mayor's office or the city council members, how would you counsel them? Just stop disagreeing, man. You know, and, uh, they disagree on everything. Anybody, anybody wants anything. You know, Fosse had the rail from Waianae to Hawaii. Kai. They turned it down. They got the viaduct. They turned it down. For what reason? Who knows? And then they say, vote for us. I'm the only guy in my union that votes the way I vote. <laughs> so we've had a whole line of politicians attempt to get this thing going, and nothing's come of it. Um, you think there's something in the water that happens that no one can make a decision? Or you think just people just like to discuss things to the fact that it can't get done? It's just everybody thinks their view, and it's all negative, and you can't do it. Then when they finally get it, then the city council gets in, and then they go and vote against it, and then it's not my constituents, it's not this. It's just uh, it's an island way. It's just the way it is here in Hawaii. It's just uh, if you don't like it, you leave. If you like, don't bother you, you stay. You've obviously stayed. What do you think if they just say we're gonna, you know, we're gonna keep the uh, the arch? And we're just going to take the rest of it down, and we're going to just going to be a natural beach. That'd be nice. Yeah, I think they need little jetties out. Let's say the Corps of Engineers is the problem. They don't like jetties. So, like in Hawaii Kai, they wouldn't let them put a stone jetty in. So they put a cloth fabric jetty. They say jetties. Don't. The beach is still there because the jetty's there. So why don't they put a stone jetty? It was just an article in the news today about the fact that you know these um, seawalls actually cause a, a severe erosion on both sides of where the seawall, you know, has been put in. Now, jetty's a little different, but it's still, in a sense, a seawall. What did they do to our rigger? Our rigger had a, jet, a little jetty out there. And the environmental protection, they said it wasn't there, the core, so they made him take it out, and the Elks lost their sandy beach, and uh, they lost their sandy beach. So, it's, you know, they pacified the law, and everybody lost their beach. Right. Okay. Well, hey, Jim, I want to thank you very much for sharing your opinion, and I hope someone's listening to you, and I certainly hope the mayor's office and the city councils, you know, they'll, they'll tune into the show and actually hear your voice and do something about it. Okay. Aloha. Don't send me any threatening letters, though. <laughs> no threatening letters. No threatening letters. Thank you much. Joking, okay. Happy New Year to you. I'm going to have to cut that. <laughs> Aloha. No, uh... What's on your mind, Hawaii? I'm here with Alfred. We're at Ala Moana Park. And Alfred? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Okay, Alfred. What's your hope for 2018? Uh, 2018, I think, uh, hope to be a great year for all economic uh, uh, issues that I've we've been uh, uh, trying to make better since uh, on 2017. Uh, for, for the family, we hope to uh, uh, get together more and uh, have, have a great time and uh, meeting each other, you know. And uh, for Hawaii, uh, again, you know, the uh, bright sunshine and uh, good people continue to forage in this place and uh, so that we can come back to this place and visit more. You know. Are you visiting? Yes, I'm, I'm visiting from Malaysia. Yeah. And you're having a good time? Uh, yeah, we're having a great time. You know, this place is uh, amazing and it's, it's really... Well, what do you like about Hawaii? Well, firstly, the sunshine and uh, the cool, nice, cool, windy weather is, is, is amazing. And uh, uh, the people, the friendliness, and uh, the, the water is everything, the scenic, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a fusion of, of everything, you know. This, this place has it all, you know. Yeah. Not too hot, not too cold. Well, you, you have some places, I mean, like on the on the North Shore, you know, it's, it's a little bit windy, you know, the wind can be a bit chilly, you know, and then up on the hill, you know, you, you get really nice, uh, cool breeze, breeze there, and back here in uh, Waikiki or near the Magic Island area, you get a little bit warmer and all that, it's very nice, just a nice 
Nice to meet you. Yeah, How did 2017 work out for you? Was it a good year for you and your family? Well, 2017 was uh, fine. It could have been better, yeah. Uh, how way? In what way? Well, we could have uh, uh, done a little bit more in terms of uh, um, um, trying to get uh, some things to work for the house and all that kind of things, you know. <laughs> and uh, well, it didn't work out so well. 2000, maybe the plan just didn't didn't plan. You know, uh, go according. It doesn't matter where you live. The house owns you. You don't own the house, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we still go back to the same place. You know, we'll try to make that better next year. You know, this that's the hope for it. Yeah. So, if you had a hope for the world for 2018, what might it be? Peace, definitely. We would, peace. We would, like, we would like to have more peace. You see? I think everyone would like to have the same. I yeah. think that's a great wish for 2018. And yeah. Alfred, I want to thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Thank you. And um, what's on your mind in Hawaii? Appreciate your time too. Thank you. Thank you very much, team. Okay. We'll Aloha. We'll see you soon. Yeah. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king. Come banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You could talk to God. Go banging on his. Tim Bapicello, what's on your mind, Hawaii? I'm here with Ryan. And Ryan, Ryan, we're going to talk about uh, the past year and the new year coming up. So you have any resolutions for 2018? Yeah, to make a lot of money and have good dreams and um, always believe in God. And yeah, That's a good one. That's not bad. How was 2017 for you? What, uh, what went well for you and what didn't go so well? Everything went good. Uh, many changes. For the New Year's, uh, just always thinking positive and making good changes for the New Year coming up. How long have you lived in Hawaii? My whole life. Where are you from? I'm from here. I know, but to what yeah. what neighborhood? Uh, Kaimaki. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you are local. Yeah. Um, how have you seen things change in the last uh, ten years? Quite a bit. Yeah, Waikiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks uh, ever since social media and just the whole evolution just after 2000 this just came into a big city now yeah everybody seen... came want to live in hawaii yeah no it seems that way oh and the homeless sorry yeah well, that's that's one of the bigger problems that we have right right, right. Yeah. yeah if you um now 2017 was a very difficult year for for politics and actually families and friends because some of our friends and family had one position in the politics right and other family and friends had the other position. Did politics play uh, any role in your life in 2017? Well, now that Trump came aboard, uh, it's kind of like he's supposed to come on board. So you, like, it kind of like bring everything down, get everybody in this down thing. And then when you think positive and all the good things for the new year, like, like so, then the new year, everything would just change. Right. Or when he's finished, actually. Yeah. Did did the Trump administration or President Trump come in and any conversations with your family or friends? And if it did, how did you handle it? It always comes up to everybody, actually. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's stocks, everybody's business, everybody's thinking has impacted. Do you think most people think alike or was there a definite uh, difference of opinions, uh, either with friends or family? I think everybody thought alike for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen in 2018 with the new with our administration? Well, there's the first of all, you get the not for the administration, but you get a raise for the um, minimum wage. So everyone's happy at that point. Administration wise, um, what you mean, like 
Well, I just, you know, we're going to have a new tax policy now starting as of as of tomorrow. Uh, we'll have, right. well, not tomorrow, but the next day we'll have a new tax policy. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of Americans are hopeful that that's going to be an increase to their, their budgets and their wallets. Hard to say. That's true. But the good thing is that um, unemployment rates are down, so there's a lot of jobs for everybody. And that's what's making everybody feel better because they're more secured. With, Do you, you know, think employers should pay higher wages here? There's always a complaint that many of the employers don't necessarily pay, you know, what people would like to see. That's why so many people have one or two, maybe sometimes three and jobs. A lot, and a lot of homeless. Yeah. Yeah, because you cannot make, yeah, they should. It should be like 15, maybe the mainland is like 15 an hour. Because over here is like the most expensive place to live. And if you cannot, if you're making 10, 10 an hour, there's no way you can manage if you're from the outside. You got to be built in from Hawaii to be actually living here. Did you read in the paper that some of the local banks actually announced that number one, they're going to give their employees like a thousand dollar bonus, but also they were going to raise their their wage mm -hmm. to fifteen dollars an hour? I heard of that. Yeah. 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 Is that a good thing? Always a good thing. <laughs> Raises, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, one last question, I guess, and that is. Uh, for you and your family and your f and friends, what's what's the hope for 2018? What do you expect to see and what do you hope for? Hope for everybody to be happier and less violent because social media and everything is making everybody just go berserk, actually. They got to calm down, put down the phones and live life and live aloha. Yeah. Well, there it is right there. Live Aloha. Yeah. And sometimes uh, people forget that when they're on social media. Boy, that's the best thing I've heard all day. Ryan, thank you very much. You. you heard it from Ryan. Live Aloha. This is What's on Your Mind, Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I'm here with BJ. We're in front of the War Memorial Nanatorium down here on Waikiki. And uh, BJ, thank you for so much for joining us today. And I guess I just want to ask you what you think about uh, repair plans for the uh, museum. You know, I feel that the symbolism of, of this is worth the money to bring it back the way it was. And I would assume that's because the veterans of World War I and all veterans, for that matter. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it was built in their honor. I think we should honor that. I realize the cost of it is probably 10 times what it was originally, but I definitely think the investment would be be worth it. Does it surprise you or kind of amaze you, whichever, uh, that this has gone through 30 to 40 years of, of ideas and um, yet nothing's really been done with it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad that they've let it deteriorate, you know, but I think it's, like I said, it's a very unique concept, you know, of when it was built and why it was built and how it was built that, I don't know, I, I think that it would be wonderful to have it back. So would you prefer to see it exactly as it was intended and that's a swimming pool or um, other ideas that have been pitched were a volleyball court or just resort to a beach, a public beach? Um, I would like to see it as a pool. I think that the uniqueness of it should be restored. Now before this interview t is taking place, you mentioned that your, your mom was born and grew up here and that she recalls it quite well. As a young I, um, child and a teenager, she came down and swam in the pool very a lot, you know, and facilitated the park and yeah. There's been talk about the possibility of having a public-private partnership uh, somehow try to develop this to save costs to the city and county. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think that could somehow get in the way of the original intent and plans of a, a, a war memorial? You know, I don't, I don't recall how, you know, if there was a charge to get in at the time that, you know, it originated. But I think if it kind of went up to a private entity, that might interfere. So if I think if we kept it public and it had, you know, access for it to have, so everybody could enjoy it. Well, I think that's a very good suggestion. I think a lot of people would probably agree with you on that point. So uh, earlier, just before the holiday, the Mayor Caldwell did come out and said that, you know, there's renewed spirit and energy to try to get this thing put together and, and have a plan take forth. Uh, to be put forth and, and, and take effect. Um, if you had of any words with the mayor's office or anyone in city council, what might you say to them? I would say to definitely go ahead with your plans. I think it's money well invested. 
Okay, BJ, thank you so much for your time and your interview here today. I'm Tim Mappicella with Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. We're at Ala Moana Park, and I'm here with Robert. Robert, thanks for joining us at, on our What's Your Mind Hawaii. So, do you have make resolutions for 2018? Uh, get more fit. More fit. Yeah. Do you uh, make that resolution every year? No, I've been steadily doing it. Okay. Do you usually succeed in your resolutions? I'd say so, yeah. 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 So how did 2017 work out for you? Was it a, a good year or was it a difficult year? And how did it work out for you? I'd say it was a good year. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, got third place in nationals for badminton. For what, what sport? Badminton. Could you explain that to, uh, for our audience? I'm not sure what that is. Badminton? Yeah. Like the racket? Oh, badminton. Badminton. Oh, okay. oh it's, it's called differently in the States, I forgot. <laughs> Canada, it's called badminton. Oh, you're in Canada. Okay, from Canada. Where, where about in Canada are you from? Uh, Vancouver Island. Oh, Vancouver, okay. Yeah. Um, you placed what? what? Third. Third place in the Nationals. Yeah. That's excellent, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Are you here visiting, and if so, for how long? I'm here till the 8th. We have a, have a badminton tournament here for badminton. Yeah. Yeah. You could call it as you're used to calling it. That's okay. Now that we know what it is, we're, we're on board. We're ready to go with it. Um, did did U.S. politics come up at all in your social circles uh, in 2017? Not really. We mostly tried to avoid it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, are you are you successful staying out of uh, U.S. politics? Yeah, I just kind of walk away. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, other than playing Batman, what else do you do? Uh, I teach piano, go to Vancouver Island University. All right. Well, good. Um, thanks for coming to Hawaii. We appreciate you coming here. Uh, tourists are a very good thing for our economy. And um, come again. Appreciate it. Aloha. Yeah, aloha. This is Welcome back. 2017 was a year where little was normal. Looking at some of the top news stories of the year, it's hard to imagine that many of these events actually occurred. Um, in no particular order, let's look at some of the top 2017 news events that directly or indirectly impacted our lives. Number one, without a doubt, was the first year of the Trump administration. Tradition and political protocol from the Oval Office was turned upside down and played out in dramatic tweets and impromptu interviews that kept news agencies on their toes. Number two was the powerful and devastating forces of nature. Hurricane Maria, Harvey, and Irma turned Puerto Rico, Louisiana, Texas, and the Virgin Islands into wastelands of debris, mud, and water damage. Over $1 billion is needed to restore the FEMA operations account. The multiple infrastructure failures of Puerto Rico seem like even the basic restoration of electricity to parts of the island will not happen until well into 2018. Number three is the special counsel of Robert Mueller investigation to determine to what extent did Russia influence the 2016 presidential election. An investigation only taking place as a result of firing of the director of the FBI, James Comey. Coming in at number four was a legislative attempts to re repeal the Affordable Care Act. Two separate times, the Republican House and the Republican Senate attempted to dismantle federal health care plans for millions of Americans. Congress in the Trump administration was successful in the largest federal income tax cuts in decades. It will be interesting to see how the $10,000 cap for property tax and state income tax will affect, affect taxpayers in the state of Hawaii. Number five, the Las Vegas and First Baptist Church in Texas shootings dominated our headlines and the call for, yet again, changes for gun control. At the same time, when this happened, both Republicans and Democrats in Congress seemed to want to come together in a willingness to, to put together and agree upon the elimination of gun stocks. Gun stocks is a device that modifies and allows a gun to shoot in rapid and continuous fire versus a weapon which was originally designed to shoot as a semi-automatic. The, the hashtag MeToo movement is topping at number six. Top newscasters, actors, directors, politicians, corporate leaders have either resigned or have been terminated due to claims of sexual harassment. This, this movement has really impacted how we look at 
uh, what's going on in, in the world of employment and, and every aspect of, of, of life in our society. Number seven is Colin Kaepernick taking a knee to symbolically protest police brutality during the national anthem during the NFL games, which split the country into a heated quarrel. On one side, the gesture of football players taking a knee conveys a blatant disregard to the American flag and the love for the country. On the other side, the act is viewed as a right to express an opinion about social injustice to those of a different race. Today, many teams with many players are taking a knee or sitting on, on the benches during the national anthem. Several NFL owners are paralyzed to act on either direction. The number eight headline is the federal indictment and confession and cooperation of former U.S. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The least controversial news story occurred on Monday, August 21st. It was the day North America experienced a total solar eclipse. So this is just a list of small sample of major news events that played out. There are a lot more news stories that were in the news that were listed here. But the two political news stories that will not leave my memory or my outlook on today's political landscape for many, many years to come are the following. I witnessed in politics that surprised me and I think many Americans. And that is, rarely do you hear words of support for repugnant groups like the KKK and the neo-Nazis, especially from our own president. I think many Americans found it hard to comprehend how political calculations over human decency could, could be communicated in an effort to shore up and stir up a political base of support and future votes. Yet, we saw it, we heard it, and frankly, it felt like a swift punch in the gut. What was it? It was the president making an equivalency between the KKK and neo-Nazis to those opposed to them in Charlottesville, Virginia, in an attempt to defend those protesting the removal of the Confederate statues, the violence, and the death of a young woman the president said, and I quote, but you also had people that were very fine, people on both sides. Well, one side carried lit tiki torches shouting in unison anti-Semitic and racist chants. So no, no, there are not very fine people on both sides, not even close. By definition, hate groups are not nice people. A verbal wink and a nod to the most loyal and obedient voters who follow Trump is not something most Americans expect to hear, especially in 2017. Hard to top that, but it was topped with a full-throated declaration endorsement of senatorial candidate Roy Moore. The president stated his preference that the Senate keep the seat for Alabama in Republican control, and he asked Alabama voters to go to the polls and vote for Moore. The fact that there were numerous sexual assault allegations against Moore involving a 14-year-old girl and other underage teens was not even part of the consideration, nor the fact that he is legally removed twice as a federal judge. Further, the fact that the Republican National Committee also threw its support and money behind a flawed, very sick candidate is something that will stick to the Republican Party for a long time to come. Political power versus human decency was a calculation played out in 2017. The two examples cloud my vision of what it takes to make America great again. America is great. America, America is greater yet if we reject the unbridled quest for power and reject the political spew of any politician or body of politicians who attempt to normalize outrageous words or behavior of moral indecency. That's what's on my mind. I'm Tim Apicello.